How's it going guys? My name's Corbin and today we're going to be working on the CB600F Hornet. Uh, this bike's been a little project of ours that's slowly been ticking over, just changing things as it goes. We've replaced the handlebars that were damaged until our new ones turned up, so we'll be doing that at a later date. Fixed the tank, repainted it, given it a custom paint job, uh, and the front fender. Replaced this front section that used to be a big plastic triangular ugly headlight with this custom setup. So today what's on the agenda is to change this rusty old factory exhaust. So a couple of reasons we want to do that. It's heavy, it's restrictive, it doesn't sound good. And well look at it. It's rusty, it's got scratches, it just looks terrible. So we've got a Delta Vic 4 into 1 stainless system. It's pretty well straight through Norse and it's gonna really open it up. As you can sort of see, you might not be able to tell from there, but this exhaust comes down in a four to a two, and then from a two to one, and that does a U-turn underneath the swing arm, goes back to the front of the bike, does another U-turn, comes back, and then it crosses over under the bike and shoots out the muffler. So that's a lot of unnecessary turns and baffles and all sorts of things that we're gonna be getting rid of. So without further ado, we'll get our work area set up. We're going to put a mat underneath the bike so that any bolts or washers or anything will fall out. We're going to be caught by the mat. They're not going to go bouncing and running along the concrete, falling into gaps, especially if you're outside, falling into grass. So set up your work area. We're going to get all the tools that we need. Um, maybe going to have to take the radiator out or at least unbolt it to get at some of these header bolts. We'll see. Maybe just undo this, slide forward. We'll have a look as well as certain things. This bike in particular, we're pretty lucky with. A lot of mufflers will be bolted on with the same bolt that holds something like the pillion pegs or the rear brake booster or something of that nature. Luckily for us, this Delta Vic kit is a straight bolt in. Everything is there, including gaskets, sealer, absolutely everything. So let's get cracked and set up the work area. We're gonna later on we'll show you roughly what this sounds like and then we'll do a comparison at the end of what the new system sounds like. I have a feeling it's going to be awesome. Pretty much it can't get worse than it is. It's pretty really boring. Like it's not a scooter, but it's sort of like a hairdryer. It's boring. It's very boring. So let's fix that. So we've laid out our exhaust kit, we've got all our header pieces there in size, order, gaskets, 4 to 1, the pipe and the muffler. So that's everything we get in the kit including do not throw away the lid because there is a little bolt there, very important, taped on the box. And they give us some exhaust sealer as well. So before anyone freaks out about this car right here, using it as a workbench, it's my car, don't stress. And I'm gonna repaint the bonnet, I'm not happy with it, so don't worry about that. As you can see, we've got our socket set here. I do have a um, shifter there. If you don't have a socket set, you've only got bits and pieces. So the idea to get your shifter and tighten it down onto the bolt. That gives you the exact size of the bolt head. And then you can take it back and compare and see what sizes you need. We've got the entire socket set there, so no dramas. And I highly recommend, if you're gonna be working on motorbikes quite a lot, get one of these. This is the most handy thing you can have. Pretty much all motorbikes are put together with Allen key heads. Fairing kits, Harleys have them, all sorts of stuff. This is just a metric kit. Now, if you're gonna work on Harleys a fair bit, that thing there actually uses Imperial and metric, which is really annoying, but a lot of these will work. It's just not gonna be the perfect size. So that's all we're gonna need for today, for now. Um, other than that, luckily for us, we don't need to get the radiator off. The extended piece, that extension will reach. So you really don't know what you're ever gonna find working on these old second hand. But it's when you start to work on them that you find things like that. 
The reason I can't get my socket on here is that it has blobs of weld on it from where they've tried to weld, for whatever reason, something there. And then, that household nut that's from something else, if it will focus, no it won't. There we go. It's not meant to be there. Okay, so we've removed all of the nuts from the headers except for one. That will hold it in place. So when we start undoing the back end, if it drops down, it's not gonna fall off. Start by removing all of these Allen keys to get the heat shields off. That way we can see what we need to do behind it. So as you can see here, we've had to get our extension bit and a 12 mil socket to get in that bracket in the middle. And then around the other side, <coughs> we've had to leave our spanner in there and wrench it from both sides. Little things like that you don't find out until you take off the covers and the muffler and things like that. So with the rear bracket unbolted, we move on to our front one. Remember how I said this exhaust love doing U-turns? Well. This bracket's at this U-turn, and the other bracket was at this U-turn. So it's bolted on at both of those, the muffler is on its own, and then all the headers. I think, well, yeah, that's it. So we'll undo this last nut, and we should be home and hosed. Yeah, there we go. The exhaust is disconnected except for our O2 sensor. So that's where our shifter will come in handy. You can look back here. You can just see it back here. That's where our shifter will come in handy. I can just open it right up, crack it, and then just undo it by hand. And we're done. But ladies and gentlemen, here's the difference. As you can see, Lots more baffles, lots more weight. It's all rusty one-piece steel. As opposed to nice light stainless, it's good flow. So if you wish to clean your engine, now is certainly the time. You have the best access to clean all these parts, especially if it's leaking and greasy. This one luckily isn't. But if you've got a bike with fairings especially, you don't get this chance very often. There it is all its shining glory. Getting ready to put it back on, so we've sat everything out in order. The headers are numbered, and so are the receiving pipes. And then we've got a link pipe there with a block in it that we can take out and put the O2 sensor in, and the beautiful little stainless muffler. Now, when you do order a Delcovic exhaust, you get to choose what muffler you'd like. You can get a carbon fiber, you can get them longer, fatter, skinnier, whatever you want. But I just like this one. It's going to look neat and tidy. It's not going to be overdone. It should be a very nice note. All right, so we've given our engine a quick tidy up. And we're just going to start by putting the headers on. Obviously, number one being the longest will be the furthest away. Two, three, four. So, where is it? Number one. And go. Over here, now, this is something I love about Delcovics. Pre made black on the inside because it has been tested, but they've got these already on them. You don't have to recycle them from the old bits, which is awesome for us because we just slap it straight on. Don't have to worry about the rusty old ones. Now I'm just going to do these up finger tight so they sit where I want them to sit. And then we can adjust them all together and then tighten them because you need to be able to swing them around. You can see, Need to swing them around to get them to fit together. So, chuck number two on there. Now that's 
something I want to do before putting sealer on there is just check that everything's going to fit. If you don't want to get all the sealer and gaskets and stuff in place, and then it doesn't fit. So double check by doing this, holding it all where it's got to go, make sure it's going to work. Would you look at that? That is beautiful. Really good fitment, very easy to do. Just line them all up, give it a little wiggle, and they go in. You can start by putting number four in first, and then slowly add them in. But that's starting to look really, really cool. So, we'll put the uh, link pipe on, hook that up. We might give the O2's instrument a bit of a clean first, very sooty. And it looks like we're in business. It's looking very good. Okay, so now that we're happy with the fitment, we've got our copper gaskets. These are gonna go in where the headers meet the engine block, and then we'll fit these. These are our spring locks that will hold the headers to the collection pipe, and that'll be this end done. So we do have some sealer that they gave us as well. Just gonna run a little bit of that around the gaskets on both sides before putting them on. And should be pretty much the hard part done. Now, one thing you always wanna do when replacing gaskets, especially things like this, is clean the area where these are going to go. No use putting your sealer on this and slapping it on when the surface that you're sealing it to is crumbly and covered in gunk. So clean it off first, even get like a wire brush, we're gonna use a scouring pad. Just scuff it up, get it clean, maybe even give it a little degreaser only while you're at it. And then when it's fully dry, seal these up with this, stick them on, and then stick that back on. So on closer inspection, these gaskets were still on there. I thought they'd come off with the exhaust, but as you can see, there is a bit of a difference in them. So I'm not sure whether to leave these on there and allow this to bridge the gap. It fits quite snugly in there. So, although I'm guessing this will squash quite a lot with the new, uh, set up on there, but we'll see. Using a screwdriver, you can get it in one side and lever it and pop it out like that. That gets these old copper gaskets out. Okay, so all our exhaust outlets are nice and clean. I'm gonna take our little uh, exhaust sealer they've given us and pop a hole in the top so like a super glue container so we'll just pop a little hole in it there we go and i'm just going to run a little ring around these gaskets so that i can sort of glue them onto the engine block so about half the ring will do it and then you can smush the rest of the way you don't need a lot you just need to cover that front surface. You don't really want it filling in the middle. Sort of just like icing on a donut. And yeah, I haven't had lunch yet, so food and allergies coming up. All right, stick him on like this. There we go, voila. So we'll do that with all of them and then stick a little bit on the other side as well. Stick the exhaust manifold on there, bolt it down be done. So I'm going to do the rest of these. I'm sure you guys don't really want to watch that. So, okay. Hey guys, so now we're at the point where we're happy to start tightening up our headers. The one thing you need to remember when you're doing them up is do each one in increments. So give one maybe three or four turns, give the other three or four turns. And keep an eye, the entire time you're doing it, keep an eye on the special washer that goes around the header itself and bolts it to the engine because you want it to be level, like parallel with the engine block. You don't want to do one all the way up and then do the next one all the way up because one will be all the way in and the next one will just be as close as you can get. And you'll end up, instead of say, here's the engine block, instead of your bracket being like this, it's gonna be like this. So 
Make sure you do them up with each other as you go. And this is the one that have welds on it. So this one's gonna be tricky. I've already done the first one. So we'll do the first one, second one up a little bit. Life hack. If you've got a bolt or nut, the same situation as this, where the end of it is a little bit burred, take your socket and extension, turn your brakes away so you don't hit them, tap it on. Nearly there. Little taps as well, otherwise, if you get one big one, you'll smash this. And now, that. Okay, so this next part requires some pretty specialist tools. What we're gonna need, oops, get set up here. We need a hammer. And this is something that everyone should have, a piece of wood. Now, this is a fairly soft piece of wood because we don't want this to get damaged. So, when this hits this, then this, the thing that's gonna give way first is this, and not this. I'm sitting on something. Oh, that. This is why that felt weird. Okay, so, sit this over the end of your collection pipe. And we're just gonna tap it, just to sort of try and evenly knock this on. Now, these springs need to stretch between the two, and that gap is just a little bit too big. So tap your way to victory. Try and get the bottom in a little further. Jeez, it's tight, it's very tight. But we'll give it a crack because they are springs after all. So Delcovic gives you a little tool, perfect for the job. It's just a ringlet with a hook on the end. So hook one end to here, grab like so, and stretch, boy. Stretch for your life. Look at that. So do your top one first and your bottom one first, and it will pull the middle ones to where they need to be. There we go. Now, because it's got some tension on it, pulling it together, I'll give it another little tap. Then once we get these two on as well, give another tap again. So we'll just tap a tap a tap a. I think we might need to do some more tapping because that's just not going to make it. but pretty easy to get little things like this while you're in the heat of the moment. Make sure obviously this one is at the lowest point, being the lowest spring. That one on top of it, don't 
cross them over because you'll get rattle. That's what these are for. It's got little rubber stoppers. Make sure that they sit on the bike at the point where the spring is contacting it. No good of it being up here if this part of the spring is touching the metal. It's all to stop vibration and rattle and horrible noises. So, we've got them all in order. None of them cross over. Our rubbers are in the right spots. Might just lift it up a little. This one. Yep. Perfect. There we go, on to the link pipe. Now one thing, whenever you're doing hose clamps of any kind, whether it's radiator, air hose, or exhaust, make sure the damn spot where you need to get the tool is at the front, or at the top, or wherever you can access it. Because a lot of the time, I work on other stuff people have done before, and this is just wherever it happened to be, and you've got to somehow get under here to get at it. It's just stupid. Think about if you're ever gonna have to work on it again, and put it where it's easy to access, like right at the front. Okay. Now, shifter, where is it? Ah. Okay. Crack that. Now they do supply a copper ring whether you want to go O2 sensorless for whatever reason, or you can reuse it if yours is completely shagged. Ours seems pretty fine, so I'll just grab the rag and a bit of degreaser. So I don't get degreaser absolutely everywhere. Spray a little patch of the rag. Scrub, scrub, scrub. Scrub your O2 sensor until it's fresh. Now, that's gone black from scrubbing it. Obviously, that's not gonna do anything, so pick a new spot on the rag and do it again. Keep doing that until it is not black anymore. You can also do your threads as well. You're just gonna really make your life easier when you're trying to screw it in. Won't change the performance at all, but it'll make your life a little easier when you're trying to thread it in the link pipe. There we go, nice. Clean O2 sensor. Now this bracket probably gonna end up where not there. Yeah. So Okay, so this might seem a bit uh, counterintuitive, a bit uh, wild, but really all you have to do to align your exhaust properly, grab here, which is a solid part of the frame, and your peg, I was gonna say pillion peg, your peg, and just gently put on here and apply pressure, and the exhaust, because these are all individual, will rotate and sit where it needs to go. Now check, Lean right over and check that you've got clearance behind here. You want at least two or three millimeters. We've got about 10, so that's sweet. And lo and behold, perfect fit. So we'll go ahead and bolt some of this up. Get our O2 sensor in, and we finish. Pro tip when you're doing a O2 sensor, first thing before putting it in, Twist it the wrong way, probably about two full turns. Stick it in and then let it go. Well, actually start the thread and let it go because the wires will twist up and then as you wind it into the hole, they'll straighten out. Then when you're tightening it up, you're not really twisting the wires too crazy. They're sort of where they want to be. Do that first and then nip it up all the way that it's got to go because now when you manipulate it, you don't have to try and fight this 
later on. So you can actually put this where it's gonna to wanna to go. And lo and behold, it's already in there. You don't have to worry about wrestling it to get it on. Okay, now, because we don't use the same hanger this time, I've actually gone, we've also got our exhaust further in. You can actually remove this exhaust bracket hanger and reuse this bolt and use just that solid hole in the block to mount the exhaust. It's gonna give it an overall shorter length and we'll have a better seal in here because this pipe is fully in this pipe. So go ahead and chuck the bolt in. Gonna do it finger tight for now. There we go. Tighten them right up. And just out of purely good housekeeping, I'm gonna take the bolt, little tiny 10 mil bolt that goes in the top of the bracket and I'm just gonna put it back in because while it's not really doing anything technically, it's not lost. So if we ever need it, it will be there. Weapon, how good. Okay, now we will chuck our hex bit on. Ah, perfect. Beautiful. Now, don't over tighten that because you'll just strip the bolt that's in there and break it. As long as you cannot physically move it and there's no give between the two surfaces, tighten up. Okay, now it's at this point of the install where you need to work out whether you want to keep the baffle in your exhaust. You see that in there? Kind of looks like a torpedo comes out the back end and there is a little screw under there, that blank hole there, has an Allen key screw. So remove that and what we're going to do is just get the wooden end of the hammer, poke it down like so and tap it out. Of course I'm half tempted to leave it in but then again we're changing exhaust for obvious reasons and we want it to be loud. So. I might put it back in at a later date if I find that it's annoying my neighbours because I come home at late hours sometimes, depending on when I get away from work or the gym or whatever. So for now, we'll make it loud and crazy and then we'll see. If I feel like it's obnoxious, then I'll go ahead and put the baffle back in. But it's as easy as unbolting this, slipping it off, whack it in, whack it out. Easy done. We're going to said don't throw away the packaging because of this bolt that was kept in here. That is this little fella. Now that we've removed the baffle, this is what will replace the baffle screw. So it will fill this little gap so it's not spewing exhaust out of there. So we'll go ahead and chuck it in, tighten it up, and away we go. And now for what is probably the easiest part of the entire job, we've done up the muffler. All we've got to do is install the belly wrap. Now there's two parts to this. You've got a rubber cover to protect the stainless steel and your belly wrap itself. So remove the film, protective film, keeps it all pretty and shiny. Chuck the rubber in it. Don't put it around the exhaust first, because you'll see it's got channels in it. See those channels? So they fit in there. Start with the middle and lay it on. Like one big sticker. And you'll feel it will click around the belly wrap. Cool, so just go right over it, check that it's all in place. Now, stick, you can see that one end looks bent to the crap house. Stick this end, the flat end, the bike side. And that's still this side of the bracket, but Put it on the bike side, run your bolt through. Like so. And when that bends, that bent side is gonna be adding pressure backwards. So as you tighten it up, it'll be keeping pressure on the bracket and it will bend it to be the right shape. I need to get right up in there. Okay, 
so we've tightened up this bolt and it is on there. system is installed. It's only taken about two and a half hours and that's with me operating the camera, setting everything up, moving junk out of the way to make a nice space. So realistically you could start this in the morning and have it ready to ride by lunch. So everything is direct bolt up. The finish is just flawless. The quality on these parts is excellent. There's no bodgy welds, there's no sharp edges. Everything just bolts up perfectly. So kudos to Delcovic on that one. Top job. It is a beautiful exhaust system. Really, when you've worked on cars and motorbikes a lot like I have, you really do appreciate a bolt-on kit that is a direct bolt-on kit. Because a lot of the time it needs modification of something, either the car or bike end or the kit. You've got to cut something, you've got to make your own bracket, you need to supply your own bolts, you need to reuse certain things, this, everything supplied. If you wanted to, you could just cut that off. You don't need any of the gaskets, brackets, bolts, anything. It's all supplied, ready to go. I don't know, obviously, this stud bolt is the time it was. But, absolutely killer system. So, I'm keen to fire it up. Let's see what it sounds like.